train to switch to here today is we're sitting by the Zion of Le'e Menu. Le'e Menu. And we know that the Gemara says, the Prophet of Zion on the base. Amr of Shimboi, Amr of Yochan, Amr of Shimboi, Yukai, Yom Shibor, Kachbok, and Salamo. Why other Shor Lashem, Achibor, Le'e, Amr, Pam, Oyez, Hashem, Le'e was the first one ever to thank Hashem. We've spoken many, many times about this Gemara. But I'd like to add today something very, very powerful based on a story I was told by the person who happened to me. The story is as follows. There was someone who needed a very, very big tope. He a very big tope. And he searched far and wide for over a year, a year and a half. He couldn't find anyone to do this tope for him. Until finally, he found one person to do the tope for him. And he was elated. He had the greatest level of joy that he could possibly imagine. And he was specific A couple of months later, as part of this Toba, as part of this test, he was interacting with that person, and the person bashed him, smashed him, pulverized him. Now, it wasn't in person. It was, he was talking to someone else, and he happened to hear that conversation. And the guy was like this. I didn't get I don't understand. This person did me such a great talk. On the other hand, he pulverized me. He doesn't know he did it because I wasn't there. He said, but he pulverized me. I don't, how does this work together? It's such a big chesed, but at the same time, he pulverized me. Anyway, so the point is like this. This person went and spoke to the person who had pulverized him, and he, and he, I said to him, listen, you really pulverized me. I was very, very hurt. He said, I'm sorry. And I tried to explain why he said it. It didn't do it. He was still upset. In any event, this person was so upset that he was pulverized. He came back a few days later. He said, Plony, I don't understand. You pulverized me. So Plony did. He just said, but it's true. Everything I said was true. It's really, really true what I said. In any event, the person was even more confused. He had done him such a big chesed, and yet he completely pulverized him. Ayeka, how does that work exactly? Anyway, this person was speaking to him, to some of his, one, one or two of his rabbis, and then he realized, like, a Eureka, really a Eureka, and Eureka, which in Yiddish is an Einfall, means that. The idea drops into your head. Einfall. Einfall. Uh, you realize this person is an unusual person. The reason he was willing to do the chesed is because he's an unusual person. And the reason he could pulverize me and not feel at all bad about it. Yeah? And he's not, he wasn't a bad person. He just wired a little bit differently. It didn't, it didn't bother him. He didn't. Pulverize somebody else, it didn't bother him. Right? It didn't bother him at all. He didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Yeah. It's Lishi Tasai. He's an unusual person. And the same reason that he's willing to do something that other people weren't willing to do was the reason why he pulverized him. It was Lishi Tasai. And this person understood there's absolutely no reason for me to be upset at this person. Why? Because I needed this chesed. Hashem created a person who was willing to do this chesed. Along with those attributes that we needed to find someone to do this chesed was also the fact that he's willing to pulverize me and not to feel bad about this person to explain to me. This was such a great leapfrog. Because so often in life we meet people who might treat us like garbage. Or we might have dealings with them which we don't understand what's going on. Or as in Yiddish they say, Bas Tutsach Dwarte. What is going on? We don't understand. And that's because we're, every one of our brains are wired in a certain way. For example, Avram Avinu. His brain was wired for Chesed. He was the Merkav of Chesed. He was the epitome of Chesed. And then, so what does Hashem do to you? Now, if I was God, I would say, Avram, 
do the biggest chesed, give all your money away to stop or take care of five million almanas. No, did that anyway. Or whatever, do something chesed. No, Hashem doesn't tell him to do that. What does he tell him to do? Kill your son. The biggest act of cruelty known to mankind. What's going on here? What's to the Torah? How could Hashem ask Avram and Nino, the Merkava of Chesed, is a chariot of kindness, to kill a son? It doesn't make any sense. And the question is the answer. Our purpose in the world is not the thing that should make sense. This is a very big mistake that we make 24 7 all the time. Our purpose in the world is not the thing that should make sense. Our purpose is to accept that everything is in God's hands. Everything. And even the thing which works the worst has a good side to it. Even somebody killing his son in cold blood, shechting on his bed. There's something good about it. Our amino, that was the key. And the same thing with this person. He realized that because this person is wired in a different way, so too. He was one to a chesed. And another thing came out of it, which wasn't as pleasant. But that was needed in order to find someone to do that chesed. This is such an important role in life. We all view things through our own eyes, which is often wrong. Not, I won't say it's wrong. It could be it's right. It could be according to moral, ethical standards. We're not supposed to polarize someone. And if you learn Shemir you should learn who knows to run. Learn how to be safer, uh, the power of words. It says quite clearly in the right there. You're not supposed to polarize someone, especially in front of your face. But, that's the, the, the good news is, is that everything has a purpose. Everything is a teaching of something. For my flesh, I say God. And the things which look the most terrible have a good side to them. We just have to look for them. If Hashem brought experience into our domain, it means there's something we're meant to learn from it. And we have to work very, very hard sometimes to find that Lesson. So Hashem should give us the greatest siyad to the Shemaya to deal with unusual people. Now, we ourselves might be unusual people. I can certainly say that about myself. I'm an unusual person. Um, I, when I had meningitis about 27 years ago, maybe it was 25, I got this headache. It was getting worse and worse. We had a guest from us from Brazil. She gave me some painkillers didn't help. And I went through the night, the pain got more and more and more. In any event, by the morning, I felt like there was a hammer banging on my brain. So I went to Diamond Chakras. It didn't bother me so much that I felt like there was a hammer banging on my brain. Anyway, in Diamond Chakras, I went to the doctor's office, Dr. Joel Lakewitz, and I collapsed in front of his door. And he came out a few minutes later. He said, Robert Travis, it seems like something is wrong. He said, yes, I feel like I have a hammer banging me on my brain. He said, well, Robert Travis, it looks like you have meningitis. You should call the ambulance immediately. And by the way, why are you wearing to him? He said, I just finished chakras. He said, but it's not humanly possible to dive in chakras if you have meningitis. I said, okay, I guess it's not humanly possible. I did it anyway. Anyway. Baruch Hashem, the ambulance came an hour later, and, um, and of course, we told the emergency, we had to go to an hour because uh, we were having a coffee break or something. We got to the hospital, and uh, they said, the, the driver said, I think this um, man has meningitis. They said, no, we don't think so. We think he's just faking it. So I said, you know, maybe we don't fake it, but at least check, you know. On the small yeah. side, that maybe I really do. So I checked, oh, you know what? We do have it. It's a good thing that we checked. It's a good thing that we were careful. And we didn't just let you go without uh, checking. In any event. So the moral of that story is that I admit I'm an unusual person. And anyone who deals with me right now knows that already. You will listen to my show. But it's unusual people who can teach us the deepest things in life. Because things which are very, very contradictory to our world outlook. That's where we can really grow. 
from the place where things seem the most outlandish, the most outrageous, the most outstanding, all the outlets, yeah? all the things which seem completely beyond our world view and outlook, like killing your son, or like pulverizing something from his face, we have to know there's something good about it. There's something good about killing your son, and there's something good about pulverizing something from his face, etc., etc., etc. If Hashem brings an experience into our domain, He's coming to teach us, don't think for one minute you understand anything at all. Now, the important Nachimina from what I'm telling you here today is that it might be you're upset with someone. Maybe they uh, pulverized you in front of your face. Maybe they insulted you. Maybe they had some sort of financial dealing with you wasn't good. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe some health-related issue. Uh, you know, I told the story before, even somebody stole the passports from a family and all his children died in the Holocaust. Now, that's a very hard one. He accepted it with love. And when he saw the person many years later, he didn't say one word. That was a tremendous, tremendous chorus and effort, energy. But everything has a purpose. If you realize, nothing happens in this world but Mikra. Right? The Mikra is Raka Hashem. Miracle is me, Raka Kel. Everything that happens is divinely guided and has a reason and a purpose. Our job in this world is to look for that purpose to try our best to understand it. God is teaching us something. The more difficult the people are around us, the more God is teaching us. So let's all try our best to internalize this. Lord God, Hashem should help us to be successful in this endeavor. Amen, K, T, A, the Son, and the Gula should come. The merit of doing this, the Gula, Gula will come very quickly. Because this is Sinaschina. Sinaschina is hating someone because they're different than us. We should never hate someone because they're different from us. Just the opposite. We should love them because they're different from us. Because there's so much they can teach us about how different it is. We can look at the world differently and grow from that change in outlook. Man can't